Welcome to Entrepreneur India and glad to have you on the digital cover of Entrepreneur. Thank you so much and it's really an honor. So Yash, what are your early memories of being introduced to the business environment? I've literally grown up around the business. Uh, my mother, one of her early offices was located in a slum area in a place called Kotwadi in, in Mumbai. And I remember walking those uh, narrow alleyways to reach her office. And her cabin overlooked a buffalo shed. And uh, as a young uh, child, you know, just witnessing this was very humbling. And then to witness her, her rise over the years to finally um, working out of her dream space, which is an office that uh, we built about eight years ago uh, in Navi Mumbai. It's a green space. It's a 90,000 square foot uh, office, which has really been a dream of my mother's. And, uh, and just witnessing that a journey from that slum office to here has been truly inspirational to me. Sure. So when you were trying to bring change into a 25-year-old conglomerate, how did you lead the transformation? Honestly, fashion as a business, uh, there's always so much change. Uh, so change is something that we are honestly used to because it's a creative business. It's a business that involves a lot of storytelling. But yes, you know, when it comes to systems and processes, um, you know, change is challenging. And uh, I think one of the challenges we face is when we started bringing technology into the company uh, about, you know, a decade ago. Uh, just to get people uh, to change their mindset, to adopt technologies, to adopt new processes, definitely a challenge. Uh, but I think we did it in a very efficient way. Uh, just for an, as an example, we you know migrated our ERP systems uh, to SAP. We migrated our auto management systems. We have brought in Salesforce uh, uh, as our digital partner for our e-commerce. Uh, and so there's been a lot of technology that's come to the company in the last few years. And I think we've just been patient with our people. We've done a lot of training. We've done a lot of upskilling. I think that's super important. And I think it's just a matter of time of until everyone really gets used to it. And it's been a it's been a challenging journey, but uh, I think the benefits that you reap out of it are just uh, invaluable. So, and from USA to UAE and now from Chandigarh to Ahmedabad, you truly led the expansion of the brand across India and the global scale. So, what were the customer learnings you drew from the global and the local markets? I have been personally leading the uh, global expansion for the company. Uh, I've learned uh, a couple of things. Uh, you know, number one is the customers are in many, in many ways similar everywhere. They all are looking for uh, clothes that make them feel good, uh, make them look good and add value to their wardrobe. But yes, there are local differences in depending on which region you're targeting. So I think the, uh, the key uh, ingredient here is that uh, you need to first identify the gap you are filling in that market. And then you have to, to some extent, localize your merchandise to suit uh, the customer needs there. So while we don't make any major changes to the brand, the brand stays the same, the design philosophy stays the same. But yes, we do localize our merchandise uh, to uh, cater to the consumers in those uh, in those different regions. And that's what we've done uh, uh, in the US and that's what we've done recently in Dubai. And as a designer label, how has e-commerce shaped up for you? As a company, uh, we've always uh, believed in technology. And, uh, you know, when the pandemic hit, uh, we were one of the few companies who actually had of up and running e-commerce website and we did benefit from that. But I think that's when we realized that technology is super important and is going to really, uh, you know, lead the way in the future. And we told ourselves that we really want to have the best e-commerce site that there is, um, at least, you know, in India for a fashion company. And in 2021, we embarked on a journey to migrate our entire digital landscape. And uh, we partnered with Salesforce to make that happen. And I can proudly say today that we have a fantastic website that not only is amazing from a customer experience perspective, uh, but also gives us a, a very, very powerful omni-channel capability. And yours was among the first to receive investment from a major private equity firm, which is General Atlantic. The PE firm actually invested $20 million for 23% of House Panita Dongre. So how did that add into the growth and scale of the brand? General Atlantic has been a fantastic partner over the years. Um, you know, the kind of value these companies bring in terms of information is just amazing because, you know, they have a fantastic uh, basket of portfolio companies, uh, especially General Atlantic has had investments in, in, in amazing brands like uh, Tory Burch, you know, more recently Gymshark. Uh, so they do understand uh, consumer business well. Uh, so I think one of the um, 
things they brought to the table were definitely systems and processes that we were able to adopt and then uh, you know modify to suit our needs. And of course, you know the money we raised uh, definitely helped expand our uh, retail footprint both domestically and internationally. So as the brand operates across multiple price points and has made its appeal across the aspirational segment as well as forward fashion, are you following the Ralph Lauren model to build a fashion house? Um, I think our model is very unique in its own way. I think we're one of the few companies, uh, and I think the only company in India, who started off our journey uh, creating accessible brands and then went up and established a brand in the design and couture space. I think that journey is always more challenging. You know, when you start off accessible and then you go designer and you go premium. Um, but having said that, you know, our, all our brands to us are premium brands. You know, we are a design house. And um, uh, I think our business model is very unique because today we have Anne and Global Desi that are in a certain accessible price point. We have Anita Dongre that is in a, uh, in a couture uh, segment. We have Anita Dongre Grassroot that is the first um, uh, label that focuses purely on, on craft-based uh, clothing and is, and is sustainable. Um, as a company, what we've always believed is that whatever brand we create, we want to be innovative and we want to be solving a problem uh, that a customer has and we want to be filling in a gap that a consumer has. So uh, that's what we've done and, and yes, I think we are in a very unique position today with the, uh, with the kind of brand offerings that we have. Sure, so what's the best way to find out what your customer needs? Honestly, the best way is to spend time on the shop floor. I mean, nothing can beat that, right? Uh, just spending time on the shop floor, meeting customers yourself, uh, having conversations with them, getting feedback directly from them is just invaluable. And number two is, uh, you know, having a lot of dialogue with your uh, front-end teams. I always say that the front-end teams are really the backbone of any retail business. And, uh, and just having a very robust feedback mechanism in place can, can, can get a wealth of information for us at the head office. So I think these are the two most important ways to understand what the customer needs. And how is your operating style different from that of your mother, Yash? Uh, I think for me, uh, I do believe a lot in delegation, uh, whereas my mom uh, is more hands-on. I think both styles have their pros and cons, and I think you know, we create a good balance at work. Uh, where I tend to delegate a lot of uh, work, uh, you know, work in a more collaborative way with the team. Uh, my mom is someone who's creative, so she likes to do things herself. Uh, and I think that, that way we create a good balance of different cultures in the organization. So like you just said, creativity and business are often looked apart. How do you balance the two? Uh, I think in fashion, you're always balancing the two because creativity is such an integral part of the fashion business. I think in any function in a business, uh, uh, there's some level of creativity. So I think in a fashion house, uh, there's always an overlap on a day-to-day -day basis with creativity and business. And that's something that we've been very used to and we, we kind of managed to pull that off on a, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis, literally. What could be your next business extension to achieve bigger growth? What are your future plans for the enterprise? The future plan is honestly to grow organically, to grow sustainably. Uh, you know, we want to build a, a very solid, profitable business. Um, there are definitely avenues we're exploring. We want to expand our product offerings. We want to get into new product categories. Uh, and definitely international is going to be a focus for us uh, in the coming years as well. Uh, we want to take the brands global. We really want to be uh, one of the first um, Indian fashion houses uh, to make a, a name for ourselves globally. So, you know, I always say we want to be an India proud global brand. And that's something that we're really working towards. Wow. And lastly, what is your three point advice to people who are creative but can't think scale? Number one is to definitely find uh, a right business partner to, you know, strike that perfect balance. I think every creative mind needs an analytical and a business mind. So find someone who matches your value system, very important. Uh, number two is uh, grow slowly, grow sustainably. Uh, I think uh, that's very important to make sure that as a creative brand or creative company, you never compromise on your values, on you know your product quality, on design. And and thirdly, I think an extension of the second point is you know don't feel the need to chase valuations. You know believe in yourself, uh, believe in your gut, gut instinct, and grow a business that's truly uh, uh, built on 
on on on strong foundations and and trust me as long as you do that the, you know the valuation and numbers will follow thank you yash thank you so much for talking to entrepreneur india today thank you so much so glad to do this